Millions of people flock to Las Vegas to spend their time and money on the world famous Las Vegas Strip. But if you're a local, you know there's so much more to experience here in Southern Nevada. I'm Danny Beckstrom. Welcome to How to Vegas, your weekly guide to all of Las Vegas and all of Southern Nevada. In the next 30 minutes, we'll tell you about places and things that us locals can enjoy from an art exhibit inviting you to explore the joy, leisure, work and resilience of black women in America to what's happening over at National Atomic Testing Museum more than 70 years after mushroom clouds have settled and ceased to be a tourist attraction. Those looking for a meaningful experience in Las Vegas are running out of time to view Seeing Seen. The art exhibit at UNLV explores the presence of black women in America. And as 13 Action News' Amy Abdeslayed shows you, a visit will likely stick with you well after the paintings, photos and historical objects on display are returned to their owners next week. I thought first about my identity as a black woman. In Seeing Scene, professor and curator Erica Vitel Lazar invites us to share the company of black women. I wanted to fill up whatever space I was allotted with imagery that reflected us and all of our glory, all of our hard work, travails, resilience, and joy. And so this exhibit, Seeing Scene, is purely born of that impetus. For the exhibit, Erica tapped artist Kushandra James to create a commissioned piece honoring three women she knew had to be included, but who she had only ever read about in historical texts. They were three enslaved women. The mothers of gynecology. Um, Betsy and Arca and Lucy were actually subjects to medical experimentation at the hands of Dr. J. Marion Sims. Records show he operated on them and dozens of other enslaved women without their consent and without anesthesia. It's horrific, but their story is also one of extreme resilience. They learned how to tend their own wounds. They learned how to assist him in surgeries. So in many ways, they became surgeons. And that's the story Kushandra wanted to tell in her piece titled Black Saints Gynecology. There was no record of what they looked like. There was no portraits. He didn't describe them. I didn't want to make up a face. I didn't feel like that would properly honor them. So I wanted to make the halo behind their heads extremely bright so the features would be distorted, but you can uh, tell that they're African-American women. She also did something she's never done before. I wanted to um, uplift them by giving them a uniform. After some research, she made one, sewing for the very first time. Right next to these pieces is a contemporary photograph of a young woman. We see human anatomy in one of the books that this figure, Ariel Hall, was able to study human anatomy, to go to medical school, to use the human anatomy in her art, in any expression that she so chooses. The exhibition spans across mediums and time periods and celebrates modern sports icons. Asia is adorned in these pearls. As well as women that came before them. This portrait of Flojo was used as a cover for Newsweek. What I love about it, the bright coloration, again, the celebration of color, but she's also got her nails done. Pearls are on. Hair, you know, is just impeccable. In Seeing Scene, it hangs on a bright pink and orange wall painted for the exhibition. The way that we change the space once we enter it, I think is very much a part of the black woman's story. You can catch Seeing Scene for one more week at the Barrick Museum. It's by the library on UNLV's main campus. There is no cost to enter. Learn more on ktnv.com slash art. For How To Vegas, I'm Amy Abdel Sayed. Enjoying our How To Vegas show? Well, we have brand new episodes and so much more local content on the KTNV streaming app. To learn more about our app, including how to add it to your TV or streaming device, visit ktnv.com slash apps. We'll be right back with more of How To Vegas after the break. Welcome back to How to Vegas, your weekly look at what there is to see, do, and taste right here in Las Vegas. For more on things to do around the valley, visit ktnv.com slash things to do. Locals know Las Vegas isn't just a tourist destination, it's a community. So why not get out and explore a bit more of the city we love with some fun community-minded events. Our community calendar covers the family-friendly happenings across the valley that you can enjoy for under $25. 
First up, Market in the Alley is back this weekend. It's the kind of event for anyone who likes art, food, music, and shopping local. You can pick up handmade goods from artists and creators while also grabbing a bite to eat and listening to live music, all at Ferguson's in downtown Las Vegas. Check it out on Sunday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 1031 East Fremont Street. During Market in the Alley, the city block is taken over by more than 50 local businesses for shopping and mingling. Next, theater for everyone to enjoy. Also in the downtown area, Las Vegas Academy of the Arts is debuting a sensory-friendly performance on Saturday. The curious incident of the dog in the nighttime showcases an exciting live theatrical production in an environment tailored to audiences with autism and other sensory sensitivities. Las Vegas Academy says they're proud to be the first high school in Nevada to present a sensory friendly performance like this. LVA says the content is a little mature, so they recommend this play for children ages 12 and up. Tickets are $15. 22222 is a big day for weddings, but if you're already married and want to celebrate, Marriage Can Be Murder is offering discounted tickets. They'll be nearly 75% off on February 22nd as Las Vegas' longest running interactive dinner theater experience celebrates its 22nd anniversary. That means you can get dinner and a show for about $22.22. .22. If you thought about renewing your vows with your sweetheart but weren't sure how and when to do it, there will also be opportunities for free marriage vow renewals after the show. The interactive comedy murder mystery show has a newly renovated home at the Orleans Hotel Casino. The next one is for the kids. The West Las Vegas Library invites children and teens to celebrate Black History Month by making unique street art self-portraits on Tuesday after school. You can find more information on ktnv.com slash community calendar or visit the Las Vegas Clark County Library District's website. In Henderson, the Vegas City Opera will show how Maya Angelou changed the world through art with its third annual Voices of Women concert series. Their valley-wide tour of Maya Angelou Caged Birds starts Saturday at the Water Street Amphitheater in Henderson. There are performances at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. and it's completely free. If you didn't find what you're looking for, there's always more to explore on our website. Just type in ktnv.com slash community calendar. If you're looking for more shows, entertainment, or ideas for date night on the Las Vegas Strip, you can check out ktnv.com slash 13 things. Enjoying our How to Vegas show? Well, we have brand new episodes and so much more local content on the KTNV streaming app. To learn more about our app, including how to add it to your TV or streaming device, visit ktnv.com slash apps. We'll be right back with more of How to Vegas after the break. Look into the faces of those who live here and you'll see it. A powerful spirit and pride you won't see anywhere else. Friends and neighbors coming together to help and offer hope to those in need. Building for the future, taking care of one another. Here we celebrate life and rise to every challenge. We are different, we are diverse, we are strong, and we share a common goal. Working hard to make our city in the desert the best place to call home. Together, we bring out the best in us. Together, home is Las Vegas. Two of the most recognized, trusted news anchors and journalists in Southern Nevada with more than 50 years experience combined. Now together to keep you more informed and connected in the Valley. Dave Cavassier, Trisha Keen, now at 5, 6 and 11 on 13 Action News. Behind every story at Newsy, there is the why. You've seen the headlines, but what's really behind the rise in prices? Because when you ask the why behind the news, the world opens up before your eyes. The Why, weeknights at 10, 9 central, only on Newsy. Newsy, watch free national news 24 seven. Rescan your TV antenna to find Newsy or stream live. Learn more at Newsy.com. I love coming up here. That's why I know it's important to have an accurate, reliable forecast so you and your family can get out and make the most of your day too. Real weather from real people. Danny Beckstrom, part of the 13 First Alert weather team, only on 13 Action News. If you look around, you'll find them. Stories about people doing extraordinary things right here in our city. We've persevered because we've counted on each other and we've worked together. People helping others. Pitching in when someone else is down and needs a hand getting back up. Getting a stuffed animal that'll make them feel like they're loved by other people. Inspirational stories that'll make you laugh and smile. We call these stories Positively Las Vegas. Only on 13 Action News and now streaming on your favorite device. Welcome back to How to Vegas, your weekly look at what there is to see, do, and taste right here in Las Vegas. For more on things to do around the valley, visit ktnv.com slash things to do. 
This week on Vegas Eats, Melinda Shekels, editor of OffTheStrip.com and OnTheStrip.com, shares what trending items are available for us to enjoy around the Las Vegas Valley. Hi, this is Melinda Shekels, and this is Vegas Eats on How to Vegas. And this week, we're bringing you some new things coming to the Strip, a new brunch on the west side, and a totally new look for a Las Vegas favorite. So kicking it off, big news coming out of Resorts World this week, Crossroads Restaurant is coming to the resort. Crossroads is an LA institution in terms of plant-based cuisine, and they're going to be unveiling not only one concept, but an additional quick serve concept. So Crossroads Restaurant coming to Resorts World, it was by Chef Tal Ronan, and it's going to feature some incredible dishes that they're bringing from their LA location, like stuffed zucchini blossoms, beet tartare, house-made pastas, such as the tagliatelle bolognese, and fettuccine with truffles, and as well as other specialty items that will be exclusive to Las Vegas, all plant-based. And they're also opening a second concept, which is Crossroads Burgers. So you're gonna have milkshakes and plant-based burgers and all the like that you'll find from a walk-up style environment. So Crossroads Kitchen has been at the heart of the LA plant-based movement for many years. They're open for uh, brunch, lunch, and dinner on in LA on the corner of Melrose and Sweetser. And Chef Tal Ronan is thrilled to come back to the Strip a decade later, he was developing many plant-based uh, menus for several resorts on the Strip uh, back a decade ago, and now he's back with a new offering at Resorts World. So can't wait to check that one out when it opens. Now, a totally new look for a favorite, Chica Restaurant from Chef Lorena Garcia in partnership with 50 Eggs. 50 Eggs also has other restaurants at the Venetian. They're, they just completely revamped Chica with a design by David Rockwell. The whole new restaurant, new art, uh, new bar, and of course, new menu items. So three of the menu items that you absolutely must check out there are the Bidia Empanadas, and they're so good. These Bidia Empanadas are made of rich, Bidia meat, as well as a fabulous dipping sauce and Wagyu empanadas there and consomme with chili. So good, so delicious, so light too, and really delicious. They're also doing this roasted meat platter, which has Wagyu strip, it has tenderloin pinchos, lamb, venison churro, a Meyer lemon chicken, and a chimichurri sauce. And then to cap it all off, they're doing the signature flaming skull, which is exactly what it sounds, a molten chocolate cake in a skull that they set on fire at the table. It's a real showstopper. Check all that out at Chica. And if you're lucky, Chef Lorena will be there. She's got restaurants in Miami, restaurants in Aspen. So this new design really reflects the Miami vibe on the Las Vegas Strip. On the west side, Al Salido Posto, which has become a favorite over the last year, is now doing lunch and brunch service. So Al Salido is there in Tivoli Village, and they have an incredible brunch menu, which features a Bloody Mary, three different types of Bloody Marys, a build your own mimosa bar, which is great. It's actually a Prosecco bar, of course, because it's Italian, as well as large format shareable uh, carafes of, of cocktails for the brunch service. So when you're done doing your day drinking, indulge in those brunch favorites, such as lobster Benedict, braised beef cheeks with polenta, stuffed French toast, drizzled with the most delicious syrup. And then of course, classics like spaghetti meatballs, Scottish salmon, shrimp scampi, and chicken milanese. All of this is available Saturdays and Sundays at Al Salito, 10.30 to 2.30. Check that out. And this coming Sunday, I'll be celebrating my birthday Day over at Ada's, which is their sister restaurant at Tivoli Village, and they do a special fried chicken. It's called Jackson's Fried Chicken. It's only served on the third Sunday of the month, and it's served with a bottle of sparkling wine. You go in there, Jackson's Fried Chicken. I'll be there, and it's $35. So check that out if you want a Sunday fun day. This has been Melinda Shekels, and this is Vegas Eats on How to Vegas, and tune in next week for more of Dining in Las Vegas. Thank you. We'll be back with more of How to Vegas right after the break. Proud wife of a Special Forces soldier. I'm United States Army Retired Sergeant First Class from the 82nd Airborne Division of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Senior Airman, United States Air Force. To all of our veterans, we stand behind you. 
and acknowledge the sacrifices that you have made. At Scripps, we strive to be an employer of choice for reservists, transitioning veterans, and their families by offering programs for transferable skills. See where Scripps can take you. Two of the most recognized, trusted news anchors and journalists in Southern Nevada with more than 50 years experience combined. Now together to keep you more informed and connected in the Valley. Dave Cavassier, Trisha Keen, now at 5, 6, and 11 on 13 Action News. I love coming up here. That's why I know it's important to have an accurate, reliable forecast so you and your family can get out and make the most of your day too. Real weather from real people. Danny Beckstrom, part of the 13 First Alert weather team, only on 13 Action News. Look into the faces of those who live here and you'll see it. A powerful spirit and pride you won't see anywhere else. Friends and neighbors coming together to help and offer hope to those in need. Building for the future, taking care of one another. Here we celebrate life and rise to every challenge. We are different, we are diverse, we are strong, and we share a common goal. Working hard to make our city in the desert the best place to call home. Together, we bring out the best in us. Together, home is Las Vegas. If you look around, you'll find them. Stories about people doing extraordinary things right here in our city. We've persevered because we've counted on each other and we've worked together. People helping others. Pitching in when someone else is down and needs a hand getting back up. Getting a stuffed animal that'll make them feel like they're loved by other people. Inspirational stories that'll make you laugh and smile. We call these stories Positively Las Vegas. Only on 13 Action News and now streaming on your favorite device. 13 Action News is Zora Asbury. If there's one thing that I know, it's guiding drivers through traffic. Now, I may be new to town, but I'll make sure you have the smoothest route ahead. Count on me every morning. I'm checking roads, keeping an eye on all those trouble spots, showing you the best way to get around quickly and safely. If you're driving to work, school, or just running errands, I've got your back. Zora Asbury's Problem Solver Traffic on Good Morning Las Vegas, weekdays starting at 4.30. Hear all the hits from Michael Jackson, the King of Pop, in one extraordinary stage show. MJ Live, the award-winning tribute concert, has found a new home inside the Tropicana. Experience all the energy and excitement of the legendary superstar as the magic lives on through every hit, from I'll Be There to Billie Jean and Thriller. This show is brought to life by one electrifying performance, the baddest backup dancers in town and a live band. This Saturday, the Springs Preserve comes alive in celebration with the Black History Month Festival. Bring the family to experience this uplifting event filled with arts, crafts, plenty of delicious soul food, singing, and dancing. The late Dr. John Creer, local physician, will be honored. Be sure to check out the Black Las Vegas photo exhibit. Want to find your rhythm this weekend? Just head to our website and look for 13 Things. Have a great week. Welcome back to How to Vegas, your weekly look at what there is to see, do, and taste right here in Las Vegas. For more on things to do around the valley, visit ktnv.com slash things to do. Las Vegas history spans further than the length of poker tables and taller than the height of casinos. In the 1950s, watching bomb detonations was a legitimate tourist attraction that totally blows my mind. 13 Action News' Jordan Gartner takes you inside the National Atomic Testing Museum where Nevada test site stories are living on. You cannot talk about Southern Nevada's history without talking about the Nevada test site and its workers. And here at the Atomic Testing Museum, its history lives on as well as the current projects that they are working on at the site. We are surrounded by history here in Southern Nevada, the good, the bad, and the important. And Nevada's atomic history is part of it at the National Atomic Testing Museum located just minutes away from the Las Vegas Strip on East Flamingo Road. We were actually founded by the Nevada Test Site Historical Foundation. Um, and we opened to the public in 2005. 
Um, the Nevada Test Site Historical Foundation was founded 25 years ago uh, by former test site workers and um, their, their goal was to preserve the history of the site as well as the memory of the workers who gave so much of themselves uh, to keep our country safe. The museum offers guests the chance to blast into the past when it comes to Nevada's connection with nuclear testing at the Nevada Test Site. Guests in the museum can experience our extensive exhibits on the history of nuclear weapons testing as well as what the site is currently doing today as a Nevada national security site. Located just 65 miles north of Las Vegas, the site became the United States' main site for nuclear testing in the 1950s, and its stories live on at the museum. We do a lot of work to preserve the, the memory of the test site workers and preserve their story. Um, so oftentimes we will do oral history interviews with former test site workers, uh, atomic veterans. Um, we also do a lot of distinguished lecture. Um, we do our distinguished lecture series where we feature uh, different talks dealing with the history of nuclear testing as well as uh, the test site workers. The history of nuclear testing is on display from before the first test in 1951 to now as the area remains active as the Nevada National Security Site. The Nevada test site, uh, which is now known as the Nevada National Security Site, had a huge impact on uh, the city of Las Vegas in Southern Nevada. Prior to the test site being established, there was only about 25,000 people living in the city of Las Vegas. And um, by 1960, a decade after it opened, um, the population had um, exploded to almost 65,000 people. Visitors are brought into the fascinating story of America's nuclear weapons program, the Cold War, and how the test site played a crucial role in the race for nuclear weapons. And as they go through the main gallery of the museum, that's when they start off with the, the late 40s and go all the way up into the 1990s. The biggest thing people learn when they're coming through, I think, people know about the Manhattan Project, people know about uh, the mushroom cloud, the atmospheric testing that took place. Uh, but I think what they're surprised to learn is that, you know, as testing moved underground in 1963 with the limited test ban treaty, you know, they had tested from 1963 then up to 1992 doing exclusively underground tests. The museum shares never before seen first person narratives with impressive artifacts on display. We also often have museum docents here at the museum that are happy to answer any questions or share stories about their time working out at the site itself. The Mark III is identical to the Fat Man weapon, and we happen to have a, a post-war ballistics case of that Mark III. And so it's one of our biggest artifacts. It's one people can see as soon as they come in the lobby, and it is a, a real find for the museum and has been a great featured piece uh, for those coming and visiting us. Theatrical devices, environmental recreations, and interactive exhibits are all available to those who visit. We also have a simulation of an atomic bomb going off. It's our Ground Zero Theater, which is a huge fan favorite for people coming to visit us. The Nevada test site is very important in understanding nuclear warfare and continues to be vital to national security to this day. Prior to um, the Nevada test site being created, the United States government was primarily testing these weapons out in the South Pacific near the Marshall Islands. And so Project Nutmeg was started by then President Truman who wanted to find a continental testing site. With Project Nutmeg, they were looking at different uh, locations around the United States. And Southern Nevada is really the one that fit the bill. Between 1951 and 1992, they tested 928 total nuclear weapons out of the site. In 2020, the museum honored the 75th anniversary of the first nuclear test known as Trinity. And so that's really focusing on the Manhattan Project, the development of the uh, first nuclear weapons in the 1940s. So on your next trip down memory lane on Nevada history, make sure to include the nuclear side of things at the National Atomic Testing Museum. We are always doing activities and events here at the museum. Um, our Distinguished Lecture Series is up and running again, and we look forward to welcoming you here to the National Atomic Testing Museum. Reporting from the Atomic Testing Museum, I'm Jordan Gardner. Thanks for watching How to Vegas. If you missed any part of this week's program, just hit the back button on your remote and scroll down until you see KTNV Digital Exclusives. There you'll find the show and all of our dedicated streaming content. And don't forget to catch new episodes every Friday at 10.30 p.m. and throughout the weekend on KTNV Streaming. Stay tuned for more from 13 Action News after the break and check us out anytime here on KTNV Streaming, Las Vegas News on your time.